Welcome everyone, this is Zahn with Repro Products. Today's video is on some of the new top features in Bluebeam Review 2017. The first new feature is the ability for you to insert 3D panoramic images. Here I have a sample PDF file and if I zoom in to a markup I can click my little camera icon and you'll see that in my bucket list I have a 3D photo that I can now insert. Depending on the device that you're using to create the 3D photo panoramic image uh, will allow you whether you can insert it or not. You can head over to Bluebeam's website and take a look at the list of digital devices that can create 3D panoramic images for this type of insertion. You can also, by the way, insert video content as well. The second uh, 2017 feature is being able to look at the 3D PDF file and working with its markups very similar to the markups list. So here I have a 3D PDF file and the 3D tree feature is now placed down here below next to the markups list and it looks and acts very similar to your markups list. It lists all the different objects that you're working with and you can scroll and select any one of those objects. The view will change to that particular object and it will highlight that object. As you can with the markups list in the 3D tree, you can click any aspect of that object, click the color for example, and change it to the color of you want. You can also specify whether you see that object or don't see that object. You can also go into the metadata of that data too. So if I select an entity, <clears throat> for example here, a uh, just a three inch partition wall segment, you can see over here on the right hand side the metadata. And I can actually click inside here and make changes if that cell allows me to make that change. And then you also have the ability to export the 3D markups to CSV as well now. So if I click export to CSV file, it'll gather the data from the 3D tree and you'll go ahead and create the uh, CSV file for you. So when you go ahead and save the file to CSV, it'll ask you where you want to save the file. We'll click save the disk for now and I will put it under my temp folder. Once that's created, I can open up my temp folder and you'll see there is that CSV file. And if I open it up, here's our information. Of course, we can go through the process of formatting this however we want later. Another new feature in Bluebeam Review 2017 is the ability for you to automatically create forms. For example, I have a sample 8.5 by 11 RFI document here. If I want to go through the process of creating forms, I can click the form tab on the ribbon and click editor and start inputting in radial buttons, check marks, text box, things like that. And that's kind of a manual process. In review 2017, they have this auto create command now. So if I click it, the program will analyze the document and it will automatically put in the necessary boxes, fields, title, um, text boxes, and so on. So it makes your life a lot easier to automatically create those forms. Another new feature is the ability for you to batch sign and seal documents. And the way this functions is we have a sample batch sign seal PDF file here. And by the way, this is only in the extreme version as well as the auto form creation. So if I head over to file and batch, I have batch sign and seal down here click it and it opens up the window. I'll add the file that I want. <clears throat> so it'll open up the open project file window and I'll go get the file that I want to bring in. So I'll do the sample batch sign and seal file. It gets added to my list within this window. I'll click next and it automatically opens up the batch sign and seal interface window that shows you 
the image of the PDF file and it shows you the signature that you can use and if it's digitally signed or not. You can also specify by left clicking and holding and dragging and dropping to place it exactly where you want. Or you can specify a signature field if you need to as well. <clears throat> I will do the manual placement and put it here. You can include the date, you can flatten everything up, you can specify the formatting, the font, and other basic aspects. When you're finished, you click Run, and it will actually do the process. Another new feature is uh, Dynamic Fill. So let's head over to a file for Dynamic Fill. So here I have an area, and the dynamic fill feature is a new a, is a new measurement filter tool that allows you to color in the area that you want to be able to automatically give it a space name and a number, color, and area. And so it kind of takes two or three steps out of your processes instead of doing each one individually. So here. <clears throat> Under the measure tab, we have dynamic fill. I'll start the command. It opens up that interface. And then I can go in here and I can specify the name of the space that I want. For example, here, support space. I can specify any opacity that I want and any color that I want. <clears throat> I can then specify the round rectangular uh, polygon and also say flooring, say ICU tile flooring, or just measurements. I can then, he over here, I can either click create the boundary or fill it in. Now, because I have a door here that has an opening, I want to specify a boundary condition to let the software know, do not go past this fill line. And so now I can click fill and it automatically fills the data and I can get the little pieces that I'm missing. When I finish, I hit apply and close, and it automatically creates that data for me. <clears throat> so another great feature in review 2017 is a measurement command called poly length command. It's located here under the measure tab, and it's poly length. When you use this command, a great way to think about it is perhaps you want to figure out what is the egress length distance from the outside of the building to a certain position inside the building or vice versa. So if I'm over here in the building, I can click over here and as I'm dragging, it's giving me the measurements. So I can run over here, for example, say I'm trying to get out of the building because there's a fire. And as I click and drag, it gives me the measurements, and then I can run out here. And when you're finished, it creates that measurement. We can head over to the properties of that measurement, and we can specify whatever we want. Say egress line. And egress exit line. <clears throat> You'll also notice that it gives you each individual segment. If we select it and look at the properties of it, we can click Edit under the captions, and we can specify the label, the length, the depth, um, and wall area if that pertains to what you're trying to do. Um, we also have the ability to change its orientation from align to segment to align horizontal. And <clears throat> one of the other features that this poly length command has the ability for you to do is you can right click any one of those nodes, the yellow nodes, and you can split it. Or you can split every single one into individual segments. Now why would you want to do this? Perhaps you want to use this poly length command to measure a run of pipe that changes in diameter from one location to another. So you might want to split it. So for example, if I click split, I now have one individual poly length segment here and another individual poly length segment here. And so if I want to continue this one coming up here to this node, I can right click that node and say resume egress line. And if I do that, 
then as I select it, you'll see that it grabs that. If I select this one, it's grabbing that. Another good enhancement that they've made to the software is in regards to cutouts. Let's head over to an elevation view. And let's say, for example, <clears throat> I want to do an area measurement of this inset here. I can head over to the Measure tab, head over to the Area command, and start measuring the area like I typically do. And since I have it set to snapping to the content, it's easy to select those entities. And so I have an area here. And if I select it, I can again change its labeling. And if I use my cutout command, which is right here, I can do polygonal cutouts, and now I can do elliptical cutouts as well. For this one, I'll do a polygonal cutout, and I'll draw this rectangular shape here. It gives me the cutout. At the same time, it updates the area, as you can see. And then if I'm going to my tool chest and I use my area command, I can use my mouse, and the minute I place my mouse inside the cutout, the mouse turns from crosshairs to a little filling tool, and I can hold shift and left click once, and it gets all of the cutout areas and displays that data as well. Uh, as before, if I select that um, area, I can click edit under captions and specify other things too, such as wall area, length, volume, and the more that I check, the more information shows up. And if you're going to show quite a bit of data, you may want to change the scale of the font size, and it'll make it a little smaller and easier to, to read. Another enhancement has to do with the uh, searching and counting function of the software. Let's head back over to, say, a plan view. And as you can see over here, I've got some counts already created where they are counting either the sinks or the urinals or the toilets. What's new in Review 2017 is the ability for you to add your own custom um, symbol for that count. So for example, if I select this entity, you'll see it's a count measure. <clears throat> and you have all the typical default icons available for your callouts and your measurements. But you also have, so you have, you know, the check mark, the triangle, square, circles, diamonds, but now you have the tool chest. And if you click inside here, you can see that you've got a few tools available for you to work with, and you can pick any kind of uh, measurement tool that you want. And so once you select the one that you want, it'll automatically update and change. And then finally, another really useful tip and enhancement to Bluebeam Review 2017 is the ability for you to take your measurements that are in a PDF file and link them to an Excel file. For example, I have here some footing measurements on a PDF file. I have an Excel file that I have created, and it shows a basic chart. <clears throat> And it gives you basic information such as total volume of slab, footing, concrete footing. There are some cells in here that are blue. And these cells have been set up specifically to link back to this PDF file. And should any of these measurements get updated, in other words, if I add more or take away, then this value will change. So I'm going to take my blue beam and make it a little smaller so that you can see both. And so here in the PDF file, <clears throat> if I just select my markup and I just use control to drag and create a copy, you'll notice the area 
for total volume of footing has changed and that total volume of concrete has changed as well. So let's zoom in a little bit and we'll move it into the position that we want. And again, we can go to the tool chest if we want to. <clears throat> and we can use our area measurements that we want um, or whichever ones we've already created. And I can go here and create that information and it shows up. Now, how does that function in regards to the linking itself? If I open up the Excel file <clears throat> and I select that cell and right click, I can head over to Bluebeam Reviews Quantity Link. You'll see that there's a source file and it's already set up to link to that PDF file. You also can right click and click Edit and you'll see that in the Edit Link window it'll display what is the total volume or length, area, volume, wall area, whatever your choice is, and what label it's looking for. So as long as your measurements are set up where they have labels, then it will extract that data out. Similar to that here in the total volume of concrete footing, <clears throat> if I go to it and click edit, you'll see that it's looking at volume as well. And then it's looking at two separate labels, one for concrete strength and one for subject. So again, once you set up your measurements and the labeling properly, you can set up the linking. Now, the only uh, thing in regards to this new feature is that the data that is in the PDF file can be linked to the Excel file, but any changes in the Excel file don't round trip back to the PDF file. So that's a um, short video on some of the top new features in Bluebeam Review 2017. Thanks for watching.